I think the future of Far Cry is bright, or at least very interesting, with big things planned but nothing announced at the time of this recording, like I would not be surprised if that changes this year. It's at least clear that we get more games in the franchise, with the message that you got after beating the recent Lost Between Worlds DLC for Far Cry 6, thanking us for coming on this adventure and that they can't wait for the next one. And well, after doing a lot of digging and looking at recent rumors and leaks, I think I got an idea of what the future Future for one of my favorite series holds and I'll tell you everything I know in this video now if you are excited or curious about the future of Far Cry then leaving a like would really show you support subscribe for way more videos on the series and let's go if you watched my previous video that I will link to in the video description then you know that Ubisoft is not doing too hot at the moment they've canceled seven games in the last six months including Splinter Cell VR because they want to have those developers focus on their biggest franchises in Instead. And to recap, those brands are Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, Ghost Recon, Rainbow Six and The Division. So we can expect a similar roadmap as we're seeing for The Division and Assassin's Creed for Far Cry as well. Which basically means multiple console and PC titles next to a mobile game and TV shows. But the big difference is that we don't know any future plans apart from two animated Netflix shows. One is Blood Dragon inspired. Maybe you remember the QR code on the K9000 Amigo. This brings you to a website and then after completing the puzzle here, you unlock a new picture for the show. And this website is still up by the way. They also announced a different untitled Far Cry animated series in June 2021. So more than a year and a half ago with no update since. But yeah, I'm more interested in the games myself. And well, seems like we can expect multiple of them. One involving a very very prominent Far Cry 6 character, Juan Cortez. I showed you this tweet from June 2022 before with voice actor Alex in a voice booth where he just recorded rule number 9, always use the right tool for the right job, which was a line that was also used in Far Cry 6. But then, and I did not show you this before, on November 21st, 2022, so very recently, he was recording lines once again, and this time more interesting, if we zoom in, it says enemy spy activated sonar vision, which we had that back when I was KGB. As you might know, Juan Cortez was first a spy master at the KGB, the main security agency for the Soviet Union, so this is likely a callback to that. But yeah, the line spy activated sonar vision is interesting, like I don't think this in Far Cry 6, but correct me if I'm wrong, maybe this is somehow linked to the CIA, because during the Dead Drop main mission, we know that one said that the CIA is secretly helping Libertad fight Castillo. And at the end of Far Cry 6, it seems like we hear the meeting one has with the CIA on the same docks. Libertad thanks you for your support. Ah... <sighs> You know, he's so sad about that Castillo kid. I mean, what his papa did. And yeah, it seems that his contact was Vaz. Like, we know for a fact that Juan is returning in some form, but I still think it will be in that Vaz focused game. And yes, I've mentioned this many times, so I want to keep it brief and then look at the first details on Far Cry 7. There are also timestamps in the video bar, so you can skip ahead if you want. I still find it interesting, though, because of course we got that tease at the end of Far Cry 6, also the secret cutscene in the Insanity DLC for Far Cry 6 which confirms that Foss is indeed alive and the tennis ball in this like cutscene is by the way a reference to how Far Cry 3 was filmed the tennis ball would stand in for Jason when Michael Mando would be filming a scene which is a nice easter egg. And we also know that he is indeed in Yara as we see him sleeping on the bar at the end of the Stranger Things content. Michael Mondo also teased that we haven't seen the last of his character with ideas for a story already in his head. Like I will link to my full video with all the quotes and other hints in the video description because I still think it's happening. It's at least a fact that one will be returning in a future Far Cry project as he wasn't in the Lost Between Worlds DLC. So him recording lines has to be for something else. It's also interesting that people at Ubisoft Toronto who worked on Far Cry 6 are posting pictures with a red telephone in a motion capture suit. This was the sound designer on Far Cry 6 on Instagram. And well, you might recall that Anton Castillo had a phone just like that on his desk, which further confirms that something in the world of Yara might be happening. Also at Ubisoft Toronto, so the studio that led the development of Far Cry 6, they are still hiring a ton of people to work on a Far Cry project. While of course 3, 4 and 5 
were led by Ubisoft Montreal. So this could only be for that one and potentially fast game or it's for Far Cry 7 and that Toronto has a team working on that as well. Still many directors on Far Cry 5 are at Ubisoft and have been working on something for many years as Far Cry 5 of course launched in March 2018. Okay, Sean Sebastian was the creative director on New Dawn and worked on the Bloodline DLC for Watch Dogs Legion that is like two years old now, but he's now also a creative director on an unannounced project. We also got Drew Holmes who was a writer on Far Cry 5 and I think also New Dawn and has been a narrative director and now even the narrative lead for the Far Cry series. Like he must have worked on something Far Cry related for the last three to four years and it wasn't Far Cry 6. So while Ubisoft Toronto was mostly focused on Far Cry 6, Montreal was already figuring out what Far Cry 7 was going to be, but not without issues as Dan Hay, the executive producer on the Far Cry series, left at the end of 2021. He's by the way now working on the new survival game at Blizzard. But yeah, I am curious what this means for Far Cry 7. Like maybe they switched directions more than a year ago. So even if the game has been in the works for like four years, they might have changed a lot along the way. Now, what was mentioned in 2021 by Jason Schreier is that the next Far Cry, so after six, could go in a radically different direction. With Steven Dottillo at Axios hearing that Ubisoft would explore a more online oriented approach for a sequel. They both have amazing track records so I believe it and it also makes sense because while I liked Far Cry 6 a lot it was also clear that it's time for the next step. We need a modern reinvention of the series. In 2018 Ubisoft described the future of Far Cry as a game that would have different areas of the world linked by travel systems so that a Far Cry game or a Watch Dogs game could happen in different countries in the same experience seamlessly. Like that would of course be huge that instead of only having a tropical island like Yara we also have a countryside like Hope County or an Himalayan inspired world like we saw in Far Cry 4. So basically multiple different open worlds in one game. They've also been experimenting with this in Far Cry New Dawn with the expeditions that let you take a helicopter to different parts of the US and of course the special operations in Far Cry 6 had many different looking locations as well. But making different open worlds with different challenges and enemies that you can only encounter in one of them would of course be a logical next step with then even more brand new and diverse open worlds added post launch. Now of course let me know what you want to see in the comments and before I let you go I quickly want to touch on Far Cry Frenzy that thanks to Ronald in my discord has been brought to my attention. So back in 2019 there was a rumor about a free to play Far Cry game called Frenzy that would basically be the arcade so with the map editor from Far Cry 5 but spinned off into its own free standalone thing. Now obviously this never happened but it was interesting that Far Cry 6 dropped the mode which could have also been because they got a free project like this in the works. Like you want as many people creating and playing these levels so free to play seems like the way to go and user generated content is becoming more and more popular. Now this rumor was likely fake and there's totally a high chance that this won't happen but I still think that if Far Cry were to go free to play like Ubisoft is doing with many of their biggest franchises that the arcade would totally be the thing they want to focus on. It would then also not compete with the real mainline titles. We also still have that other QR code in Far Cry 6 on the wooden boxes that teased a multiplayer project. It's either something that is coming up or it was for that mobile game Wild Arena Survivors. I talked about earlier this was once a Far Cry title but they dropped the name and are now just like chugging along but they're not really talking about it. It's kind of strange. We'll find out soon enough. I could totally see them do a Far Cry showcase similar to Assassin's Creed to reveal the future but I can't see that happen this year or maybe even 2024. Usually voice actors record lines when the game is close to being done so we will see. I I still think we get the one game first and then two years later Far Cry 7 so that would be 2025 or 2026 with maybe one even in early 2024 already. I will keep you posted here so totally subscribe for everything on Far Cry, a like on the video would really help me out and check out my video from some time ago on the fast game with even more evidence if you are curious. For now I'll speak to you soon, goodbye.